In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I did to create a fully functioning greenhouse on an extreme budget. So the first thing is, is basically flattening the ground. If you already got a flat ground, that isn't an issue for you, but we were on a slope, so we had to flatten this ground and put down gravel. And then the second thing is, is if you look here, um, this is a Costco carport. And so I just used an old Costco carport and then um, set it up. So why don't we go ahead on inside and I'll show you how I set up the Costco carport. So in order to do this, the first thing you have to think about is getting the plastic on the old carport. So if you look up here, you'll see that there's some strips of wood. And basically all I did was take a wood screw and drill through the wood. Um, first I pre-drilled it. So I took a, a drill bit and I drilled through the wood into the metal and then just set it with a wood screw. And that was all I did, just like a, an inch and a quarter inch and five eighths wood screw. So I did one here, I did one there, and then using the frames to hold up the plastic. And then I did another one down here to attach the plastic down low. And then we left the bottom open, which I'll explain later. I didn't attach it at the bottom. And then one thing that I forgot to do initially, and we had a really big wind this year, was stake down the carport. So don't forget to stake down the carport. It actually lifted up and blew six foot over. So that's the first two things. The next thing is uh, the door frame. So the door frame, once you spin the camera around and you can see the door frame. So the same idea, I just took some pressure treated uh, dug fur in and I drilled holes into the metal and then just set some wood screws, three wood screws into it, and then just framed up around an old siding glass door that I had. Now you can use any door, any old door that you got. I just happened to have this one. I framed it up in the wood and then just set it in place and then just set a bunch of wood screws in it and it works great. Just a quick tip about using recycled and reclaimed doors and windows. Uh, when you're trying to get them to fit to something, don't use level and plumb, use square to itself. So, because if you try to use level and plumb with old stuff, and especially if you're doing things on uneven floors, it, it's just, it's too much work. So square it to itself cut things to the same measurement and then box them back together and then use your diagonals to get them the right and then you'll have better quicker luck reclaiming old windows and doors Great. the cool thing about this system too is if you ever decide you want to add windows you can just frame in another section remove the plastic and then set in a window which is actually what we're gonna do uh, in the future. So then after you've done that, then the next big thing is attaching the plastic. So I'm sure you might have seen some of the other videos where people just throw a big piece of plastic over it and then fold it at the ends. And I just really don't like the way that looks. It looks super janky to me. So if you come on outside, you'll see what we did instead. So we just cut it to width and then folded it all the way over the whole thing in just one big piece and then pulled it tight and then this is another sheet of, this is another piece of wood on the outside. You know, any type of cedar or exterior grade wood will work and scrap pieces work great. So basically I just screwed through this wood to the other wood, pulled the plastic tight and screwed it in place all the way along. Uh, and then if you come to the end, because what holds it is this piece of wood here. So again, the same thing, we just put a piece of plastic, put a all the way across the end, we put the plastic around, and then we just screwed on these pieces of, little pieces of extra scrap wood that we had laying around, and that really holds it in place really nice. For a budget system, it's pretty sweet. I'm super, super stoked on it. Let's go on inside and talk about sort of how we set up the inside of the greenhouse. One of the things that I think is really important with, which people may not realize, is that you really gotta air seal the greenhouse if you wanna keep it warm in the winter. Cause any little air leak, that hot air is gonna go out. Um, so we did air seal all the corners and the tops and the ends. So speaking of temperature, I bought one of these in the beginning. They're, they're really not that expensive. I don't know, it's 20 or 30 bucks. And it has a really awesome interface on the phone 
um, which gives me my low temperature, my high temperature. I get the current temperature, give me my humidity. So here's my telephone uh, interface and go to the day. And it shows me what happens across the day. So it sunk down last night and then jumped up to 81.7. Today was the max and it was kind of a cloudy day. So that wasn't that much. And you can see the inverse relationship of the relative humidity. As it went down, it went down as the temperature went up. And then I really like the week function where you can see across the whole week, uh, all the highs and the lows, like on the sunny day, it was 94 and a half. That was actually, probably I should be venting a little bit more up there. And then 32.9, we're still getting really close to frosts here. Um, and I got another one that I have outside, which shows me the outside temperature, so I know the difference. And then here's yeah. the month. In addition to that, it's also super nice to have an analog, just a you know, cheap um, temperature gauge. So right now it says that we are at 94. Um, so the combination of the two is really nice. Not very expensive and a critical tool to have in your greenhouse. So then the next thing would be the solar fan setup. So we'll start with the inside. I just have the solar fan set up just on a plant right now. Um, and eventually I'll mount it to the wall. I, during the winter, I didn't want it bringing in fresh air from the outside because I wanted our plants to stay as hot as possible. And we didn't actually do much exterior air circulation. So I just circulated the air within the greenhouse. So I'm turning it on right now. And this solar fan, just there's one little solar fan on the outside just sitting in the sun right now. And that's what's powering it. No battery, no nothing. Super cheap on eBay. I'm pretty happy with it. It's gotten wet a few times and it's still working fine. But it's a, it's a good little flow. Definitely for a small greenhouse, I think it's gonna be sufficient. And, and we will mount it up on the wall up there, probably right in the peak to manage the summer heat. So far, we've just been using it in the winter to try to keep the air circulating. The only thing that I would love would be if there was one that had a thermostat attached to it and there were no solar fans that had thermostats attached with it. So that wasn't entirely true. I found one other solar fan with a thermostat from an independent website, this one here, um, and it was $150. So I wasn't ready to pay that, but uh, it, it might be a good option for uh, if you wanna set up a more permanent system in which you could control uh, the thermos, have it turn on and off with a thermostatic function and be completely self-contained. So I can't recommend this unit. Um, if you'd like, uh, leave a comment below and I'll reach out to contact them and see if we can make a review video of that unit. Okay. So the next thing I want to bring your attention to is the water tanks. So this was a friend's. He just had it laying around. He wasn't using it anymore. So you're obviously probably not going to get one of these because they're super expensive, but you can get any type of barrel, any type of bucket, anything that you have to hold water. And you probably know the intention, the idea behind it. The idea is the sun comes in, heats up the water, it has a bunch of mass, and then it slowly radiates that heat over the cold night. So a quick note on thermal mass heating for your greenhouse. Um, so water is the preferred method of heating the greenhouse. And that's because water has double the thermal storage capacity of concrete. Um, or other rocks basically uh, and the heat absorption is is really higher because of the convection within the container because the water can move and uh, absorb more heat faster Con as i'm continuing to design and build my greenhouses uh, i'm just going to add as much solar mass thermal mass as possible so for example i've got a bunch of old uh, concrete tiles bricks laying around i'm going to lay those all over the ground of the greenhouse and that'll increase the thermal massing effect in the greenhouse oh, cool. um, one of the cool things about it is you can use it and set your plants that need that extra heat overnight like this tomato right here which is is this a tomato it's like this tomato right here that's doing super rad um, looks very different than these tomatoes but a beautiful probably heirloom tomato and then on terms of the budget, I wanted to bring your attention just to our seed table setup. 
It's just old folding tables. You don't have to buy something fancy. You can make something, but just having, you know, a folding table works great. You can change it around. You can add, we have these old V boxes. You can add an extra shelf with those. So you can get creative and use what you have around. Now I want to talk a little bit about the hot weather and how we are going to manage the hot weather. So if you come outside, I want to point out a couple more things on the outside. So if you look down here, you'll just see like this is the last place where I've attached the plastic. And so the idea is, is that I can roll these up and then let fresh air in through this whole bottom area if it's really hot in the summer and I want airflow and it has this on both sides. Um, so this winter in our zone nine, uh, Northern California coastal mountain climate was the coldest in a long time. Uh, we had, we were down to 24 degrees, which I know for many of you, that's not very cold, but for here it's, it's really cold. And this stayed about four degrees warmer than the outside air. So on that 24 degree night, we did lose basically just a pie. We didn't lose any of our avocados. We didn't lose any of our citruses. Everybody did really good. The point I wanna make about that really cold winter in zone nine uh, is that this is a pretty minimal setup. And if you're above, you know, if your lowest temperature is 24, 28 degrees, so we get a lot of 28 degree nights and everything in here was fine because it always kept it above freezing. Just wanted to show you how some of our plants really love the greenhouse. This is our Pinkerton avocado, so throwing up all these new shoots. Uh, we got, this is a, um, a Di Arturo uh, and it's flowering, it's only second year. And then, oh, what do we got over here? Oh, we got the Fuerte. The Fuerte is sending up all these new shoots. Fuerte avocado. Um, and then I can't remember what this one is. I think this is the Bonnie Dune, a local Northern California hybrid. And then look at this, this Mexican uh, lime. It's just super happy. And then, oh, we got over here. So excited. It's the first year. At, we might actually get navel oranges in our Northern California climate, which is crazy. So I hope that's helpful. I hope that gives you ideas on how to build yourself a budget greenhouse. Um, feel free to ask questions and comments and please hit the like button if you got value out of this and we'll see you in the next video.